A few weeks ago, Apple released their new 10.6.6 .6 software update for Final Cut Pro 10. In today's video, we'll look at the new features and whether or not any of these features is going to be beneficial to you as an underwater videographer. Coming up. Hey there around the water filmmakers, welcome back to the channel, as always great to see you back here with me. Now Final Cut Pro 10 has been my preferred editing software for quite some time and I know that quite a few out there of you are using it as well to edit your underwater clips. Now I was quite excited when I heard that a new firmware update was coming out and it actually does come along with some really cool new features. There's one particular feature that I think is gonna make your life as an underwater videographer a lot easier and it's gonna uh, make the editing part, especially the color correction part of your images, of your clips, a lot quicker. But we'll get to that a little later in today's video. There's a couple of other features that have also been um, added, which are nice to have, but not entirely crucial in my opinion for us as underwater videographers. Let's have a quick look at some of these features. The first new feature or the first new addition I wanna talk about is the new titles, backgrounds and transitions that Apple has um, introduced and added to Final Cut Pro 10. They're called dynamic titles, transitions and backgrounds and they look kind of uh, a little bit more modern than the um, versions that have already been implemented into Final Cut Pro 10. You can find them in the titles tab, the backgrounds tab or the um, respective um, transitions tab under the dynamic um, sort of selection or the dynamic um, section. Um, have a look through them, see if there is any of these uh, extra assets that are that you like that are going to be useful for you. I personally don't really think they're going to be adding a lot of value to my work, but it's always nice to see that Apple is adding new templates um, to a existing software. Another new feature is that you can now, with the um, Final Cut Pro 10, 10.6.6, you can import your um, Final Cut Pro 10 projects and libraries from an iPad Pro to your Mac, whether that be a, a desktop or a MacBook. Um, for me personally, this is not a big thing because I don't use um, I don't use Final Cut Pro on an iPad Pro simply because I don't own an iPad Pro. Um, so that's not really gonna make any difference for me. But if you own an iPad Pro, you've probably heard that you can. Now there is an app now, a Final Cut Pro 10 app for iPad Pro. And uh, you can actually um, start working on your films. Maybe while you're sitting in the airplane, traveling home from your dive vacation, you can do the basic editing and the sort of a rough cut and stuff on your iPad Pro. And then, and this was not possible before, you can now export and transfer that whole library and the project onto your desktop, on your Mac or your MacBook, um, and keep working on the project there and do the fine tuning and finishing your films there. So for someone who does have an iPad Pro and uses uh, Final Cut Pro 10 on the iPad, that might actually be a really useful addition there. A new feature that I was really excited about to test out when I saw the announcement and the list of different features being added to Final Cut Pro 10 10.6.6 was the so-called scene removal mask effect. Now what it does, it's basically like a um, AI generated green screen. So it gives you the um, opportunity 
to um, make the background disappear and isolate your main object um, and place uh, a different background behind your main object. And I thought this might actually be a really cool, interesting thing to try out with some underwater footage, you know, maybe some, some manta rays or something uh, that you could just extract from uh, their normal setting and put on a different background. Unfortunately, the, um, this tool has some limitations to it, um, specifically that uh, you do kind of need to have a uh, static shot. So your camera ideally needs to be positioned on a tripod, which oftentimes is not the case underwater. And you do need to have a background which is as even as possible, so like a, uh, a wall or something. Again, that's not something that really happens often underwater unless you're filming out into the blue. Um, if you don't have that, it's going to be really difficult for the, um, for the software and the AI to um, render out and to calculate um, your um, main object and to isolate that from the background. Also, ideally, you would record uh, the background first without any objects in there, and then while you're recording, your main object comes into the um, into the frame and starts interacting with the frame. So, um, realistically speaking, this is um, a tool that is more made for situations like this, talking head situations where you want to isolate your object and uh, not uh, um, not underwater scenes where you have a lot of movement, where you have uh, not very uh, even background um, and you also have objects that move around so that's really difficult I tried playing around a little bit with it I tried with uh, a manta ray I tried with some bad fish with a diver and uh, it really seems that the software is having uh, is having a lot of problems if you're not sticking to these specific um, rules that that Apple gives you in terms of static camera, no movement, uh, even background and uh, capturing first a few seconds of the background before your object walks in so that the software can analyze the background and can distinguish the background from your main object that you want to um, isolate. It is a really cool tool I think, um, in used in the right way but for underwater use, I don't think that it is usable right now. Maybe as technology evolves, we will see this uh, improve in future updates and maybe we'll be able to, you know, select a fish or a turtle or a shark or whatever um, and the software will be powerful enough to um, recognize this as an object and uh, remove the background no matter how uneven the background is or how much movement there is in the shot. But at the time being, this is not the case. So for now, I don't think that this um, this tool is really usable um, for any underwater footage right now. We also need to talk about the um, automated color control or color management that Apple has integrated into the new Final Cut Pro 10, 10.6.6. Now what this means is that you can now on the same timeline, no matter whether it is a um, standard um, dynamic range or a high dynamic range timeline, you can drop clips, SDR clips as well as HDR clips into the same timeline and Apple will do all the, the magic behind it, the conversion so that the imagery looks good on that timeline no matter um, how which way it was recorded. This is particularly useful if you use um, a variety of different cameras. Some of them record in standard dynamic range and others record in high dynamic range. You don't need to do any manual adjustments there anymore. You can just drop them all in the timeline and it looks fine. Up until now, when I was filming with my iPhone 14 Pro, which does record in high dynamic range Dolby Vision, when I used a standard dynamic range timeline and dropped a iPhone clip in there, I would always have to manually uh, pull the HDR tool onto it to convert it into a standard dynamic range clip so it would look nice on there. Or I could also do it manually by just bringing down the exposure. But it included that extra step which now is redundant you don't need to do that anymore um, Final Cut Pro 10 does all that for you automatically and I think that's a really clever thing to do because uh, with more cameras being capable of recording in H 
DR high dynamic um, range. This is actually a cool thing to integrate such a feature. And I think especially if you're using uh, like smartphones, which more and more of you guys, um, me included, are using to film our underwater adventures, it is actually helpful to have such a automatic color management or uh, color control integrated into Final Cut Pro 10. And last but not least, let's talk about the new color adjustment options that Final Cut or Apple gives you in Final Cut Pro 10, 10.6.6. Up until now, you'd have four different um, options to correct your color there. You'd have your color board, your color wheels, your color curves, and your hue and saturation curves. Now, Apple has added an extra, an extra option there, which is called the color adjustments. Now the color adjustments are basically um, sliders that you can slide left to right and adjust different parameters there. For example, your exposure, your saturation, your contrast. And contrast had always been something that um, Final Cut Pro users were complaining about because in a lot of other editing software, it is it has always been a slider to add more contrast or decrease the contrast. In Final Cut Pro 10, you would always have to, you know, lower the shadows and lift the highlights and do the contrast, get that manually. Um, now you have that slider and you can, you can uh, add more contrast or uh, take some contrast away. Um, also, what is really cool, you can um, manipulate the warmth and the tint of each of the clips. And you can do that in the different sections of highlights, midtones, and shadows. And just having that gives you a lot of, um, a lot of possibilities to manipulate your footage and tweak it into, uh, to the point where you really want to have it. So I think that this new color adjustment section, that addition to Final Cut Pro 10 is for me personally the biggest improvement with this new update and definitely worth upgrading to the 10.6.6 um, software update version. So this brings our quick overview of the new features that come along with the new software update of Final Cut Pro 10 to an end. Have you updated to this new software version already? And if you have, which one is your favorite feature out of the new additions? Please let me know down in the comment section below. I hope that this video was useful to you and I was able to pass on some useful information. If that was the case, then please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you're not missing out on any future underwater videography related content that will be uploaded here every week. Thank you so much guys for your time and for watching. Have a fantastic week. Keep capturing your awesome underwater adventures and I look forward to seeing you back here again next Tuesday when we'll talk about the new Red Komodo X and whether or not I will be updating to this new camera. Thanks for your time and have a great week. I'll see you next Tuesday.